Today, we're going to be taking a look at my Bushcraft Survival 2017 Fire Kit. And as always, don't forget to comment, like, share, especially share. Please share and subscribe. Anyways, guys, let's get Today, started. We're going to be going over my 2017 Bushcraft and Survival Fire Kit today. So let's finally get started. Before I go over the pack contents, I do want to go over this uh, kit that I carry. Now this is quintessentially the kit that I've really always carried. Fire stuff in. It's a really awesome kit and really one of my favorite bags because this bag isn't that complicated to make, but this one was actually made by or for me by MCQ Bushcraft. And for those who don't know him, he's an awesome bushcrafter out of Britain. But he actually sent me this along with some fire supplies and stuff that I still have in this kit uh, around three or four years ago. I think around three and a half, four years ago. So it's been a really long time, but I really do still love this kit. It's around the perfect size for me to carry all my stuff in. If you guys notice, if you go especially back to some of his earlier videos, you'll notice that he carries a fire bag very similar and that's because like I said, he actually made this one for me. So, really love anyways, this fire kit, really especially for that reason that he made this more in-depth look. This is what the bag looks like. Very nice leather and it has a antler toggle on it that is really awesome for helping lock Pretty much what down. makes up everything that you saw in that this kit. So I'm going to first go over all the different fire starting methods or the methods that I have in this kit that can start fires. jumping right into it. The first method I have for fire is just a ferro rod. This is a light my fire with its striker. This is a coconut my shell Amazon handle. Store. I think I actually already do but this is the coconut shell handled uh, light my fire ferro rod and its striker and I really like this thing. It is an excellent ferro rod one is in this Altoids uh, tin and this is my full-on very comprehensive flint and steel. I've actually kind of buried the steel but you guys can see there that is the steel hopefully you guys can see but this little bit here there's actually it runs a lot longer I just don't want to dig it out. But I have the steel in here I have several chunks of flint chert in here for striking and then I have a whole bunch of different natural and semi-natural uh, tinder materials in here. I have uh, cramp balls here, chaga here, this is amadou, this kind of leathery material here is just small little bits of amadou, and then of course the black stuff in these bags is char cloth. So I have a whole bunch of different methods or ways to get sparks or to carry embers from the flint, and that is very important for the flint and steel. In addition to the flint and steel in here, I don't necessarily carry them in here because they would be too big, but I have a couple little bits of antler in here in this fire kit, and the reason why I carry these antler bits is because because the flint or flint chert, as you strike it, every time you strike it, you run the probability of damaging the fine edge of the flint. And every once in a while it happens, regardless to how careful you are or not careful, it just happens. And so you have to kind of flint nap the edge back onto your pieces of flint chert. Why I carry a couple pieces of antler for anyone wondering why. So the next ignition system I carry and the last ignition system that I'll generally carry, and sometimes I rotate uh, different types of ignition systems, but primarily these are the three that always remain in here. And this one is a magnifying glass. It's just a very basic magnifying glass, nothing too special about it. And of course this, if the sun's out, which ironically today it's not, but if, this, if and when the sun's out, this is a very efficient and very awesome way of starting a fire. To the tenders and what I call like pretenders because two of these three uh, fire starting systems, the flint and steel and the magnifying glass, they can't really actually light something like this on fire, unlike the ferro rod. The ferro rod can actually just light any of these accelerants and kind of tenders just straight on fire. But for these other two methods that don't produce as quite mu as much heat, they need pretenders. So I carry a few cramp balls as well as a bunch of chaga in here. I also carry, it's kind of buried here, I also carry some amadou, which is this stuff. It looks like leather, and it feels a lot like leather, but this is actually a part of the fungus called, or a false, uh, 
tinder fungus and what you do with a big piece of false tinder fungus is there's actually ways to cut it and I think I'm gonna do a video in the summer showing how to do that but there is ways you process this and then you can make it look like this kind of leather material and it takes sparks or anything very very easy it's a lot like char cloth in fact many people think it was essentially the first char cloth getting on to uh, I just want to cover these I guess because these are a little bit different I carry these in here for whenever I want to do bow drill fires these in case you guys don't know are kind of like uh, base plates and essentially what you do is you get your board that you're going to be uh, working with and you know creating the dust out of and you set this underneath that board and this will hold all the dust that you produce from the bow drill or any drill uh, fire method and so this will hold that dust and will hold an ember in addition these are also flammable so you can take that ember and you can set this in let's just say like this and then you could actually light this entire thing on fire so you could do that I generally don't like to light these on fire because finding the right thing thickness of birch bark with these can be a little bit hard but if you don't set these on fire you can also reuse these but essentially their purpose is to be a base plate for catching uh, dust. This piece here is the first accelerant. This is a, uh, just a whole bunch of shavings of magnesium and this is really nice and this is something that I like to do before going out into the woods is take like a magnesium bar and just shave a whole bunch of really small and fine shavings and put them in a little vial like this. This makes it really easy and once again you know you don't have to sit there and spend time sh doing all the so shavings. You don't have to sit there and shave off all the magnesium. You have it just in this nice little vial. You can pop open this top, drop out what you need, and just boom, and it's done. So I carry a little bit of magnesium shavings there, and parts are uh, assortment of different natural materials here. This is aspen inner bark. I'm not actually sure what this is, but two very fine materials that you can use and really just fluff up. And once again, these make really nice birds nest tenders to correlate with you know a hot ember and something like a cramp ball or you can just start these on fire with a ferro rod so either way I like these a lot because these have versatility that I can start them either way whereas if you have something like birch bark here uh, you cannot just you know take one of these cramp balls that's on fire or not so much on fire but on, you know as a hot ember and just blow this into a flame this you would actually need a fire for but that being said if you do get a fire off of one of these you can use some birch bark to get a fire going in addition this is more just fine fungus I think this is old man's beard in particular and you can use this much like you can use these so that is look at my fire kit for 2017 it's not super comprehensive and I really don't like having a lot of comprehensive meat of doing fire though I am thinking about adding maybe a fire piston to this just kind of for the fun of it and that is really the big point to a lot of these things like the practicality of a magnifying glass is not super high like if you were to give me just one option I'd probably just take a ferro rod or a lighter or matches over something like a magnifying glass but what this fire kit really is for is to practice different skills to keep those skills sharp once again with things like this base plate for bow drills it's once and to keep your skills sharp and that's what's really important and why I have these things like Amadou and cramp balls it's to teach yourself about how to go out into the woods find these different natural materials and then how to utilize these natural materials for fire making because there may can't come a day when you don't have the luxury of a ferro rod or you don't have the luxury of a flint and steel so you may have to truly depend off of a magnifying glass or you know some type of glass that channels the sun's raise so it is very nice to get out and learn how to use these skills but primarily a lot of the things that I carry in here are really more for the fun practice you know of course on my body are going to be lighters more ferro rods so in case all of this stuff let's just say all of it gets wet or ruined you know I'll still have true things on me that will work and start fires hopefully you've liked this nice comprehensive look at my fire kit don't now and I'm out